Good morning, and welcome to uh, Wednesday, December 9th, uh, State Board of Education meeting. I'd like to call our meeting to order. First of all, everyone is here, all present and accounted for. Very good. I don't think we need to approve the agenda again. We've already done that. So we'll move right ahead to our uh, uh, information on the Citizenship Program Initiative. Wait a minute. No. What? We swapped that out. We did. Yes. We have you. Thank you. Get me on the right agenda. <clears throat> well, good morning. Welcome. Good morning to you. <laughs> good morning. Randy? Uh, well, I'm able to be here. Well, maybe a debatable uh, topic this morning. Yeah, maybe just a little bit. Uh, uh, you have also in your packet, I believe it's, it's the last item in your packet is what Ken sent all of you for his suggestions relative to the, uh, the definition. And it's a little bit because, because of the Attorney General being here yesterday, uh, this, you know, when we think about outcomes, you really talk about the definition first, and then that leads you to the discussion, the outcomes. We're kind of talking about it here in the last couple of days, a little bit reverse. Um, what we've been saying is that an individual has the academics, cognitive, technical, employability skills. What I gave you, and then you can look at Ken's, the difference, um, and the thing I want you maybe to think about is when I go out and I talk to people and I say the word college, we're really fighting uh, the public perception that that means a four-year degree or higher. Uh, and so I, I just throw out for your consideration about whether or not we just want to get rid of the term college and career and talk about a successful Kansas graduate or I think in Ken's version, a successful Kansas high school graduate and just talk about that and, and then talk about post-secondary, which the definition does. That's, that's just for your consideration. Um, but I'm going to be with some teachers tonight on a panel in Kansas City, and then I'm back in Kansas City tomorrow night with some business leaders and chamber people. And I'm going to guess that whenever we use the word college, everyone thinks about a four-year degree. And that's not what we're talking about. So my recommendations to you for your consideration and discussion um, this morning um, two terms, a successful college or successful Kansas graduate, that's new, and then the word civic skills. And I think some of you talked to, uh, yesterday when uh, Attorney General Schmidt was here about maybe it should be citizenship, and Kim mentioned that, so the civic. Um, and, of course, we heard a lot about the schools of character. You know, so all of that kind of gets entwined, and, and what's the word that you want to have maybe to accomplish that? But certainly, Kansans told us on the listening tour of the 28 sites that citizenship, they really told us two things, and business told us the same thing. We want people that give back to their communities and other people. We want that in our kids. And uh, so how we say that in a definition uh, is always maybe up to interpretation. So with that, Mr. Chairman, I will uh, turn over to you for, this is for a discussion and then maybe uh, an adoption in uh, January. So, Well, it's not just for me, it's for everyone here. You know, it, it's a lot to think about. Um, each are, are very appealing, or the Woolley definitions that we have in front of us are very appealing. It's good, good to hear from others. Sally Cobble. As soon as I, I had to switch back and forth, and now I'm. Uh, if we, oh. I've been thinking about technical skills. Um, I agree that I, I've, I did a little survey of my own, and I asked my friends that weren't in education. I asked them. If I say the word college to you, what does that mean? 
four year. Just I asked um, career ready. What does that mean? Technical. That that was. And I I'm not real sure that's what I want to um, portray. So I kind of like the successful Kansas, but I I kind of like Ken's um, high school graduate on there because we're K twelve. The academic, I'm okay with the cognitive, but you know, we've been talking about technical skills as that's necessary anymore with academic and cognitive. So I didn't know, you know, if we're thinking about it as technical school, then I, you know, I'm not real sure why we divided that out. I like the civic skills and the employable skills because. Um, I got them talking, but um, civic skills I think could ca could cover the character skills. Some and people, so, Sally, I think like civic, and others like citizenship. Um, and, and I won't the, wordsmith there, that. Some people would say, well, they're not interchangeable, and some people would say they are. Um, <clears throat> I pick civic for this, you know, and work in a previous career. I pick citizenship, uh, but uh, it certainly is true that. Kansas said, we want people that can give back to others. And well, we want the them civic to be right now is the buzzword. Or you might want to change it later, but, you know, I found that out when I walked into the wrong meeting in, in, in Austin. So it was definitely civic. And there is a national civic uh, group that considers themselves around government and citizenship that so but that's I threw my thought out that gave the rest everybody else a chance uh, I thought about this on my trip across Kansas on Monday and did a little survey on people so um, now you know we first came up with Kansas College and career ready is because we needed a definition of Kansas College and career ready and we were one of the first states that defined Kansas College and Career Ready. So are we going to um, relabel Kansas College and Career Ready definition, or what are we going to call this? Well, for what? your consideration, I think you could call it a successful Kansas high school graduate or sex, successful Kansas graduate. So and are get we? And get away from the term college and career only because it may have certain connotations to people of what that means. And honestly, that still may be part of the journey. And so this would be kind of our definition of how Kansas can. Yes, that's exactly right. And then, of course, your outcomes would flow from that. But So we're, we've talked about the outcomes yesterday, but now we're talking about the definition. So when we go, I'm sorry, I'm hogging the mic here. Okay, so when... You came up with the outcomes, and we've been discussing those outcomes because I know they came from our meeting. Why are we not taking academic preparation and show when we think we have the outcome for that? Or do those line up with this? Then if we have cognitive preparation, how do we know we've met that? I'm still some technical skills. How do we know that? So why are we not aligning our outcomes with our definition? And you can. Uh, I, think, I, think, I think of it in, in two ways, Sally. I think that the outcomes that you want to measure may be that you will encompass all of these. The accreditation, through the accreditation model, you will look at each one of these. Okay, so when But if you get into the academic preparation, you're going back to looking at test scores only at, at state level. And I, I don't know that, and we, when we discuss that in retreats, whether you want to go down to that level again or you want to kind of be a 30,000 foot view and say, what is it we're trying to accomplish overall? Through the accreditation model, we'll, we'll work with, you know, when people go out and look at the accreditation, how are they doing on test scores, how are they doing on cognitive preparation? Okay. I'm done. Everybody else. I'll just add one thing on definitions. Uh, at a training that I went through many years ago with Boeing, uh, they said that you're, when you say, you know, what's your college career 
ready definition, you don't use that in your definition. You know, you, so it, this could still be our college and career ready definition. It just, that's what it is, you know. Um, Kathy Bush. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I like adding the civic skills or citizenship. I'm really okay with either. I don't, I mean, I think that's kind of a wordsmithing thing. Uh, and the successful Kansas graduate is good. Um, you know, I don't know if we have to put high school graduate in there because we're, you know, we work with K-12 or some of our students go to 21, but they still would be graduates. Um, so I think it's it's got uh, some good additional pieces, and I feel quite comfortable that we can come up with something that uh, will meet our needs. Um, the college and career college piece, yeah, I think everybody thinks four year. I mean, I think that's what they do, and we want something broader than that. So uh, I'm not locked into that. So I I think the changes are good, and I can live with a whatever wordsmithing we need to do to agree upon. Uh, Steve Roberts. Thank you. Randy, I came into this thinking that uh, a distinction between primary and secondary was part of what we had to do in the long run. And I, I don't know why that doesn't get any traction sometimes, why we don't separate primary from secondary and why we don't call post-secondary tertiary. I, I, I've never really understood that. But I just want to, you know, I'm biased now because of my work up in Brown County. And we have so many folks that, that have perspectives that you wouldn't even think of until you <laughs> walk a mile in their moccasins. Um, Veterans Day is big up on the res. Veterans Day is huge. There's, we, we have big banners for each of the four major uh, military branches, cafeteria. And th they put a lot of emphasis on it. Turns out that in the Indian tradition, when you leave this earth, you wouldn't want to have a marker. Right? There should be no evidence that you were ever here. If you've, if you've led a successful life, you wouldn't know that you were ever here. And it's just a different perspective. It's, it's totally foreign to most of the folks that I know. So how do we tell folks who have such holistic perspectives that they need technical skills when not everybody needs technical skills, what I think of as technical skills. And, and in the writing of the math standards, we had huge discussions about Algebra 2. Well, we have to require Algebra 2. And we went round and round and round, and it, it, we finally decided that no, we shouldn't require Algebra 2 of every student. So if we can decide on that, if we can collectively decide whether or not Every student should matriculate through a level that, and there's no magic dividing line between Algebra 1 and Algebra 2. We could talk about that another time when we get into it. But if we have a collective understanding on this board that Algebra 2 is either going to be required or not going to be required, I think we would have a smoother route to getting consensus and having a, a coalesced vision. One of the things that you may help that helps me sometimes, and this goes back to Sally's comment, if you start out by saying the successful Kansas graduate, successful high school Kansas graduate, and then you just forget the middle part for a second and go to the end, to be successful in post secondary education, in the attainment of an industry recognized certificate, or in the workforce without the need for remediation. That's really what your goals are that will be measured by your outcomes. The details are what get measured in the accreditation model through standards, Steve, I think as you're mentioning. And that, so to me, the end part is, is what you're shooting for and that's what you're trying to measure at this level. And the middle part are what schools have to do to some level of variance, I think, with certain students in order to get them ready for that end part. That makes sense, as I, as I try to think of the work. Okay. 
Uh, Ken Willard. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The uh, piece that I sent out with just my mind going and uh, a point of uh, discussion, but and I and I still like it, uh, but it actually goes pretty much to what we have here. I would like uh, personally, I would like to dispense with the co the college and career piece, career ready piece, because I don't think it gets us anywhere, real honestly. But I I really like a successful Kansas graduate has those things. I, I would prefer to leave out the technical skills because I think those are employability skills and they're different depending on the direction a kid is going, possibly. And uh, civic or citizenship skills. Um, so I, I like what, what you have up there, but I, would, I think we would be just as well off to leave off technical skills. I was just trying to define what Kansas College and Career Ready means because you always have to do that for people, and so I was just trying to do that. Uh, Janet Waugh. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I agree, kind of agree about that college thing. Everybody does think of it as four year. I've tried to, I've tried to say we don't think of that. You know, I try to change people's mind, but let's face it, it's been embedded in us. I mean, let's face it, technical schools were technical schools. They were not colleges, <laughs> and they, people still think of them that way. However, I just wanted to share with you, I just went on my little handy-dandy cell phone, and I said, what does civic skills mean? <laughs> Here's your definition of civic skills. Got it here, right here. Civic skills provide the foundation for responsible and community-minded citizens and reinforce our system of democracy. Those who possess and maximize the skills feel a link to their communities and to the well-being of other citizens. I didn't look up what a citizenship skills mean, but that's what civic skills means. You know, just thought Pretty I'd good. share. It's amazing what Google can do in a handheld device. Well, there's those technical <laughs> skills. <laughs> it was. <coughs> Janet, you're ready. Uh, Jim Porter. Thank you. I want to follow up on what. Ken said, I like what he has here, uh, but uh, if we change college and career ready where it says a successful Kansas high school graduate has acquired, and from that point on, that takes the college and career ready out, but it adds everything else. And whether or not we put technical skills in is okay with me. Civics means something else to me, but that's because of my experience as a ninth grade class and how government works, you know, so, so. As long as we communicate that what we were asked by business is to talk about involvement and, and define it that way, you know, where you are a participating citizen and, you know, and, do, and do work to, to help society, you know, if we can make sure that that's part of our definition, then I think that, uh, that, that we may have a pretty good statement here with, with changing, uh, changing the college and career ready words to the can't, a successful high school candidate's graduate. I think you've given us a, a really good background. I mean, a really good uh, starting place that that I can easily support. Uh, Dina Horst. Thank you. Um, I would agree with what Jim just said because, to me, um, the. Uh, the focus, if we're trying to get away from setting a focus on saying college and career ready, which confuses, seems to confuse the public, it seems to me that saying, I'd like to see dropping the first, um, what, five, five sentences and or not sentences, but words, and just simply say a successful Kansas graduate or Kansas high school graduate who has acquired da -da, all of the things that are there. And I think employability skills are important no matter whether you're going to high school or going to college or whether you're going into the military or wherever. So I think employability is, um, those skills 
are important no matter where you land. And eventually, even if you're going to college, you will eventually end up employed, hopefully. So yes, you need those skills as well. So learning them early is not um, a bad thing. I'd rather they learn them in high school or throughout their school career rather than having to find out when they got to the workplace they didn't have them. So I think that um, that's extremely important. Kathy Bush. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, you know, it's been a while since I've done the mission and vision work, but we have a mission and our vision is Kansans Can. This almost appears to be, to me, to be a vision defined. Uh, so maybe instead of the college and career definition, it's more of a definition of what our vision is. Just a thought. I could say it's been a while since I've done that work, but it. Uh... Uh, Carolyn Campbell. Thank you, sir. Um, I personally like a successful Kansas graduate or high school graduate, if we're going to add that, um, because yesterday at lunch, the Lions Club gentleman, and we're up there. Um, I was visiting and he knew me from my previous life and so I sat down and we had a nice visit regarding he was a teacher at Call Area Tech and we had a long discussion about college career uh, preparing kids just for college or that focus and um, so I like getting away from from focusing on that because we have so many of our children that um, are not going to go to college. And I think sometimes just seeing that at the beginning, um, that choice of college or career or technical schools. So I like your I, your suggestion of uh, a successful Kansas high school graduate. And um, then I, before that I had, of course that could be changed, but uh, Mr. Willard's uh, recommendation because at first, it just seemed like there was so much, so many words in this proposed definition. Well, Randy, one of the things I, a couple of things I would say is, first of all, um, we're talking to different audiences and I'm talking to our state and to the people who have talked to us and are communicated, we've listened to. Um, uh, getting away from the college and career ready title uh, sounds like it might be the way to go but we have to talk outside our state sometimes and to others and uh, uh, when appropriate we when they say what's your college and career ready definition because that's what's talked about across the country you know we can't just ignore it we can't say no we don't have one we have a graduate description you know uh, we're gonna have to use this knowingly as a college and career ready definition, you know, for whether it's reports or conversation, you know, uh, but I think we've gotten past that as a board in terms of, you know, having a college and career ready. It's our definition of a successful Kansas graduate and each graduate should have these skills according to our vision. What I'd like to see <clears throat> building after this is uh, the definition of academic, cognitive, technical, civic, and employability skills. What, what's the definition for those? Well, you know, like Janet just did a really good definition. I like that. That was really good. Civic. Text it to me. <laughs> See if your technical skills are good, you know. Um, <clears throat> because, again, it, it, you know, like civic skills. I, I know that citizenship is probably a stronger word for some. You know, civic skills is it, it doesn't have the uh, and, 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 and wordsmithing of the uh, maybe the, the the same strength, but I think it re it reflects better what we're trying to say. 
you know, but it is citizenship. We want good citizens. That's, that has been the mission of uh, our uh, education uh, since our country was founded. You know, so that's not something new. You know, so I'm, uh, I like it. I like what you've got here. I, I think it's a great next step in our, our evolution. I would say that uh, we're going to be talking about things hopefully in two years that are going to, because we're, we're smarter and, and, and faster and better because of our journey uh, than we are today. So, but this is the right step, I think, for where we are today. Uh, Ken Willard. Well, just one more brief comment. I would just recommend, I think I would feel more comfortable with the whole statement if it would just remove technical skills because I don't know what that means to you all, but to me it just means the ability to handle the technology that we need. And uh, our kids are born with that already. They're ahead of us. That's to really eliminate, eliminate technical skills and change civic to citizenship skills. I think that really gets down to where we want it to be because we're talking about successful citizenship and people have different ideas about what civics means, even though we, Janet told us what it means. I just think that it would be suit me just fine if we just took out technical and changed civic to citizenship. <clears throat> Sally Cobble. <clears throat> well, do you need a motion? Uh, no, no. Okay. In January. In, oh, of course. I um, looked up citizenship. And Those it's pesky technical skills. <laughs> and it's much narrower in its definition because it just means becoming a citizen. Where the civic definition, if anybody would go to look up the two, citizenship would fit under civic in my mind. So I guess <laughs> that under that little bit of research, I'd go with civic. I really like taking out technical skills until somebody tells me why we shouldn't. And um, so that's my final thought. And I really wished we could get everybody to use post-secondary education instead of college and career ready. So I really like this. That's my last thought. Not really. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Great conversation. Um, I think you heard. I don't. I, we have we have some ideas out there. Um, obviously, a lot of um, passion involved with this. This is, and it should be. This is the core of what we're doing. We're, we're moving from, you know, vision and mission to uh, uh, get it done. You know, so I, I think we're in good shape. We'll, we'll look forward to what you're going to return, and uh, we'll. And it, I want to, I think we're looking for action in January on this. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Oh, do we have? Can I? <laughs> can I still speak? Yes, please do. Yes. We want to make sure everybody has their, yes. Yes, Dean, I'm sorry. I missed well, I wanted you're over. to I'm respond sorry. to technical. Um, I'm not sure I can tell you why. It, it's extremely important, but I know that technical skills will continue to um, change over a period of time. And if we do not include that, does that let schools off the hook and they no longer have to ensure that all students have access to some of the same opportunities to develop skills in that area. And I, I guess I have concerns because even the military, in my former life, I had the opportunity to uh, visit on a, a carrier, an air a Navy carrier. Um, I also been to Fort Riley in many of their components. 
And if you think technology isn't important to the military, you've got another thing coming because that's about all that surrounds them is technology. And they certainly want students who are capable of, or individuals who are capable of handling that technology and interpreting what it's saying to them. So um, I think some of our discussions here may be a little naive in comparison to what the requirements in what my perception of what I was being told they needed um, from uh, the individuals that, that enlist. So I would hope that we wouldn't drop that until we have knowledge that all of our schools are capable, um, are willing, and that and financially capable of handling this. I'm afraid that if we drop technical, the folks across the street will say then we don't need to provide any funds for technology for their schools. So um, just a thought. Thank you. Jim Porter. Yeah, I kind of changed the subject a little. I really like the direction we're, we're these discussions. I, I really like the way we're, we're going here. Uh, a practical question. How much of this can we discuss? I have a presentation to the Board of Education in Humboldt Monday night about this sort of discussion. How much can, how much, what is appropriate for me to say? Uh, it's, it's appropriate on two levels. One, we're discussing it, and we'll make a decision in January on the de definition, but you could certainly present this definition and highlight some of the, the issues that we're talking about and get feedback from them. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Janet Waugh. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <coughs> a technical skill. I looked it up. <laughs> a skill that is required for the accomplishment of a specific task. You are a wealth of information. That techno technical skills just shine. What's this age differential we have? You know, those kids can't keep up. Okay, thank you. And Ken Willard. Um, I hear uh, Dina's uh, concern, and, and I think it's, it's uh, well, uh, points well taken. And uh, for the... Although, having been in the military, those technical skills to run weapon systems and all that sort of thing are taught when you get there. And we're not going to teach that before they get there, obviously. But um, I think to provide consistency with our language um, and our emphasis on career and technical education, it, technical might ought to be left in there just for consistency and uh, in, in the talking points. And her point about the possibility of it being misunderstood by the legislature is maybe a good one. But we certainly are not going to be in high school teaching kids how to run weapon systems and all the technical things that go on ships and that sort of thing. But the ability to handle technology that they need to get get through uh, life, uh, you know, keyboarding and, and running their uh, computers and Tablets and iPhones, I think certainly kids need to be up to speed on that. <clears throat> Good discussion. Good to, to, to hear and to listen. So thank you very much. Um, Randy, you have your uh, information, and uh, I, I think it would be uh, well suited if, if we all took Jim's lead and, and uh, talked to uh, folks about what were the preliminary presentation we had here today. And January, we can expect to come back and make a decision on moving forward. So thank you very much for that conversation. Uh, the next item on our agenda is a report, Kansas Performance Report. We're going to highlight the 
2015 state assessment results for reading, mathematics, and science, and um, what trends and information we've learned. What did we learn? Oh, wait a minute. Well, I was just saying it. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, and that is correct. I am not Brad Nguyen-Swander. Uh, but uh, I am here today uh, to talk. Uh, actually, it's two-part, as I was thinking about it, uh, sitting back. <coughs> it's, it's What we have is, is really one-part announcement and one-part presentation. Um, and the announcement will comes in the way of, of really announcing uh, a, a new way, a better way, a uh, more sophisticated way, actually, of of showing all of the things that we are doing, uh, the different approach to taking measures. Now, when I use the word measure, I mean that in the in the broadest sense. Uh, and so, what I'd like to do first is just to to show you exactly that. This is the this is just a snapshot uh, of the new report card. Uh, and what should we take away from this? Um, a couple of things, really. This is, uh, in, in many ways, a template that we hope will be responsive to this board and responsive to the thinking that takes place uh, in, this, in this building with regard to <laughs> ESEA reauthorization, accreditation, uh, college and career readiness, the kinds of uh, res being responsive to the, actually the uh, kind of discussion that just took place. So how do we tell a better picture about the whole child? How do we tell a better picture about the whole district as we move away from a more narrow way of thinking about just test scores? So this, and the other challenge here is our goal today is to really just show you some examples, some static snapshots of the report card that will be going live this morning. So it would be impossible for, for me, to sh with a static presentation like this, to show you screenshots of all the different uh, permutations and ways that we can slice and dice data. So I just wanted to make you aware of what we do know, some of the more, uh, some of the more telling slides or some that would help you orient you as you go into the report card to sort of to use it yourself. So you can see here on the first Before page, you go further. I, I, I want to go back for just a moment. You yes. said the report card goes live today. Yes, sir. Okay, because I've had a lot of... It goes live Maybe today. others have heard that, too. It goes live today for the districts. That's correct. Okay, does it go live today in terms of the data for parents? Yes. It, will go, it will go live to the public. Okay. So, uh, and... It's a and pretty big announcement. That's a very big announcement, and that's what I said. It's really one part, and when they go into the report card, they will see... Uh, a very different look. And so you can see here these tiles um, that are all labeled that represent different uh, measurements that we have. College career ready, graduation, uh, IDEA performance plan, um, just jumping around here, teacher licensure. But I want to underscore, this is information that, that we have had in the past. Uh, a large portion of it. Not all of it is new. Um, and so, for example, ACT scores, the look is very new. And as the general public gets on the website, the link, and it begins uh, experimenting with the different ways in which data can be represented, data can be compared and looked at, that's, I think, what we're excited about here as an agency. So um, if you look at the top here, I don't know that you can see it. Um, at the, in the very blue, I think I can mark it, um, we have examples of different ways, and, and the IT folks call these bundles. These are simply ways in which we have bundled some information, pre-bundled maybe is a better way of thinking about it. Assessments and accountability, or if you were looking at additional performance indicators, or if you wanted information about teachers or demographics or other results. Those are, those are, again, it's just a sorting tool. It's a way for you to navigate through this site. Uh, and, and so what we're anticipating, and to be quite frank, are questions. 
as the public goes into this and finds out some really new and improved ways of looking at measurements, uh, the research and evaluation team, folks throughout the agency are prepared to respond to those questions. Hey, you know, is this a, is there something I'm missing here or is, is, is this drop down menu? Is this how this is supposed to work? So it's all good news, I think, as I said, our hope and our confidence is that, that this as a template will be responsive as we move forward to uh, new initiatives and responsive to different ways of thinking about uh, whether it's school or about students, student success, uh, school accreditation. Uh, so that's, as Mr. McNeese said, that's the, that's the announcement portion. So as we move forward, my goal was again, our goal was to just give you some examples of the kinds of measures that we have on this link, PowerPoint form. So for example, do we have enrollment? What do we know about enrollment? Um, a snapshot. Um, talked about enrollment for, for, a, for a long, long time, and, and yes, that's there. And this is, again, just one example of the kind of uh, measure or the kind of data depiction that, that is available on all the new site. And here, just as I said, as an example, we have whites and Hispanics and African Americans, trend data from 2004 to 2015. Uh, and we've got that we've got that defined there for you as uh, uh, accredited accredited schools as of 920. Another measure that we have uh, percentage of classes taught by highly qualified teachers. This is another measure that is is not new, um, one that we've had for a while. And here we have trend data from 2012, uh, from 2015. 2012. Can I interrupt? Kathy Bush has a question. Yes. Uh, just very quick. I'm assuming this is statewide data. This is statewide data. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, and again, a little more information here about highly qualified. Just in, in any measure, uh, this, again, this is probably beyond the scope of what we are talking about today, but whether it's enrollment or highly qualified, there are business rules behind each one of those definitions, uh, how that's defined, what students are included, what students are excluded. So here's just a little more information about <clears throat> what we mean when we say highly qualified, similar to the previous conversation, what do we mean when we say civics? Uh, to be highly qualified, a teacher must be fully licensed and must demonstrate subject matter competence. Competence, so there's another word, what does that mean? Competence is demonstrated demonstrated by uh, content major and those kinds of things. So anytime we put this data publicly or put it out in position such that anyone can see it, we, it the responsibility is on us to define our terms. So we have other measures. Uh, graduation rate for high schools and districts. Uh, again, this is nothing new and I've got a couple of examples for you here. Um, uh, we have an adjusted four-year and five-year cohort formulas. The GED has never been included. It's not included now. And for non-high schools, for other bit, for elementary schools and middle, we have uh, attendance rate, which again is is not new. So just an example of one way in which this these data might be or are represented on the new report on the new report card is here on graduation trends, and this is just. These happen to be three, three groups that we looked at here, all students, uh, free and reduced, and students with disabilities, and ELL. And as I said, uh, we'll, we'll further later on, I'll show you some examples of the kind of enhancements that we have, because in the past, obviously, this, is, this may be where the, where the information stopped, was on a graph like this. And this is a four-year adjusted cohort graduation formula. Um, so many folks are aware now that we have there are options as to how one uh, how much time uh, is can be used in thinking about graduation four or five years. Um, graduation trends: three more different <laughs> subgroups here: whites, Hispanic, African American. Again, just an example. Four-year adjusted cohort. And attendance rates uh, from 2015 back to 2012. Ken uh, Willard has a question. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, uh, this is really not a question for you, Scott, but uh, I just wanted to go back to the highly qualified teacher uh, slide. I guess my question is, is that I believe highly qualified teacher was a creature of uh, No Child Left Behind. So I'm just wondering if it's useful to us, uh, and it's too late to change this, but as we go forward, um, what's the difference between a highly qualified teacher and a teacher? I mean, I, are any of these things that are listed there for competence uh, not required of a teacher already? So I just think the highly qualified is, is, is um, maybe overkill. I don't, I don't know what it means, real honestly. I know there was a lot of consternation about it when, when it was rolled out, and there were 30-year teachers who were having to go through some, jump through some hoops to prove they were highly qualified. But um, that's, this is a remnant of No Child Left Behind, and I think we could look at changing that uh, discussion a bit. I don't know if that makes sense to anybody, but um, a Kansas teacher would must demonstrate subject matter confidence demonstrated by those issues, those following things would uh, suffice for me. That's not a criticism of what's what uh, you're presenting, but just a point that I thought would be worth considering. Well, going uh, back for just a second, uh, well, I won't go back. Uh, and it's really nothing to do with highly qualified, but but the idea of one, one way we can help this board have discussions, whether it's highly qual qualified or whatever, is to do exactly that. Because be as explicit as we can and transparent as we can about how that term is defined so that you can see exactly as you noted this is this is the question I have and this is how we've considered or this is the way in which we've defined highly qualified in the past so as I said irrespective of that particular topic what we can what we try to do in order to help discussions for this board move forward is to sort of define our terms as we move along so Jim Porter Thank you. This is, just, this is just a question I've always had, and I've never gotten an answer. Why? Can you give me the rationale that why GED is not considered in graduation rates? I've been asking that question for 30 years, and I've never got <laughs> Not a good one. I, I can find the rationale, uh, and, I, and I'm not balking. I just, when you say rationale, it, it is an artifact of the past. Uh, and I would have to look at previous legislation to find out. Sometimes those things, and it's, it's not been without a, much controversy. Um, we've had those discussions, but um, it's sort of what Ken mentioned. Um, uh, so it would be in, uh, I can find that for you. It would be in. Is that a federal uh, issue? Yes. Or is that? Yeah, that's part of it, isn't it? It was, a, it was an issue of, of um, uh, incentive. Yes, and who awards it? And, and yes, and who awards it? You know that, that uh, and and when? That's correct. When, who awards it, and um, well, the incentivizing the students away from away from school to it was to encourage students to go through graduation. That's right. But again, in terms of the finding what, right. what I'm thinking about here is finding the language, actual language that I can put in your hand where that. Uh, that's something we can we can dig for. Thank you. But a good question in terms of where we're going in the future. Yes, both. Yeah. Well, and again, that's encouraging for us because to try to be, again, it's a matter of defining terms. Anytime we put something out there, we want to let you know as best we can how that's defined so that it can encourage whatever discussion this board whatever. But one thing that, that, that you're reporting right now is, is based on the definitions and the laws of, that we were working under at the time that you constructed this. And, and, and one of the questions I'm going to have is how this all relates to the, the new dashboard that has to come out as part of the new ESSA, which they're voting on right now. Um, so, and there are requirements in there, you know, for Absolutely. that. You know, so, um, yeah. I'm, I'm sure this will evolve as well, you know, so you'll be using those technical skills. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we hope, again, it goes back to, we hope that we hope that this dashboard as it exists will be <coughs> responsive as it needs to it's be. It's a start of where we are and, That's and, right. and who we are at this time, not where we're going and who we'll be later. So. Back on attendance rates, 
you know, just my question would be, is this K-12? Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's, uh, it's is it just elementary? It's just, it's just elementary, uh, but I, I need to ask. It's, it's, it was our other measure. So we had high school graduation for the measure for high school, and we had attendance for the other measure for everyone that didn't have a high for, school graduation. If you, that's right. So middle school would be okay. included if that was your question. So. Well, when you say your attendance rates, I'm, uh, you know, right. again, this, and this devil's is, in the details and the definition. Well, and, and I think also the other comment, this is an artifact of the past, when I think about the, uh, the AYP summary report that was yes. part of a previous, I mean, attendance rate was front and center um, in, in place of the graduation rate for elementaries and middle schools. So, okay. Moving on then to assessment results. Again, uh, there's a question about state. Here we have, again, just an example here, 2015 Kansas Assessment results by grades, mathematics, and this is a report card, uh, populations. Uh, so uh, these numbers will, will be in a number of different places submitted where they need to be submitted on our public site. Uh, and again, this is just one way of depicting those numbers. Um, you see the levels there, and by this point, I think most of the board would be familiar or has seen these numbers before. Uh, but as of today, they are on the report card, public. Another way of looking uh, at assessment results but in mathematics by subgroup. So as you move across the bottom there of the x-axis, uh, all students free and reduced lunch, students with disabilities, ELL, African American, Hispanic, white. Again, just, just an example of what you can get. And we've done the same thing uh, with English language arts. Um, by grade, one way of looking at it, also by subgroup. Move forward, uh, and this is a little bit clunky, it's a technical term there, um, <laughs> because in science we have our old, for lack of a better word, system of, of performance levels. Just a reminder, so as you look to the right there, you'll see those words, exemplary, exceed standards, meet standards, approaching standards, and academic warning. We really uh, had to struggle with whether or not, you know, to go with the new numbers. And I think I'm incorrect, Beth, in saying that on the report card, you will not see these words, you will see the levels one, two, three, four, and five. We can change that. It was just, uh, we were sort of back and forth between, you know, we're moving away from these boilerplate descriptions of assessment scores and trying to focus on the uh, performance level descriptors. But again, this is, this is a, this is a one year, uh, one year depiction. Um, so I mean, it's something that if, if the board has a particular uh, feeling for whether we should use numbers or words, uh, we, can, we can be responsive to that. Um, but uh, for right now, this is, we wanted to remind you that right now we still have five performance categories for science until we set new standards. Kathy Bush. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Is the science test the old test or the new test? Old test. Okay, that's what I thought. So, and the new test will be this year? Uh, uh, no, not yeah, this year. Well, but the, but the 2016. 2016, but the cut scores, I guess, will not, yeah. yeah. We, don't know. we don't know yet. Okay. I mean, I think since we've gone to, I mean, I, I assume we'll have to talk about this, but it seems to me to make sense to go with, with four. It's being written, the performance level yeah. score. Right. It seems to make sense. Okay, so I think it is important for folks to know this is the old test. Yeah, we wanted to be as explicit as we could, just so, so right. uh, yeah. Right. As, okay. Thank you. Uh, okay. Again, as we did with the language arts and mathematics, we have um, the subgroups depicted at the bottom there, moving from left to right. All students, free and reduced students with disabilities, ELL uh, for science, as we did with the. Uh, with the other assessments. 
So a little more about the new technology uh, that is there on the report card. Um, uh, and and uh, Mr. McNeese mentioned in the previous discussion, I happen to be listening to conversations that we have. We have conversations within <laughs> the state, but then we also have conversations outside the state. And I, I keep using the word report card because it, it's, that's what our URL at this point says, report card. And, and we're thinking at this point about uh, performance measures, um, but uh, the report card is sort of a national term. Um, and that's at this point the way I think the state will access this when they do searches online, when they go in this direction. Um, that's something that we can we can certainly move away from, but I'm, I'm very conscious of, of what I say when I refer to this. Um, we hope that it's more of a report card than it was in the past, but that's the phrase that I, for better or for worse, what I, I keep referring to. So the new technology here well, we have. Before you move on to yes. new topic, uh, Janet Wall has a question. Uh, <clears throat> thank you. Uh, will there be anywhere a uh, definition of the levels, the one through four? I, we have it on the old ones. I mean, I think that's kind of, otherwise I think people, I just think we need that out there Absolutely. somewhere for the, for the general public. Absolutely, and, and we can do that. It, it's, it should be on the report card. I guess my, what I'm it thinking is. is whether or not it mirrors perfectly what is on CE's site. Um, the definitions of the four levels on the report card are what you approved when you voted for the four levels. So they're on there and they're printed at the bottom. There's a, the new report card look lets us, I think you're gonna show it, yeah. has uh, more opportunity for text. And so there'll be a an, uh, definition of the four levels and a link to the performance level descriptors for everyone to go to and look at what the performance level descriptors are. Okay, well I just didn't see it here, so yeah, I was fine. Well, because that's right, important, because I think. Because I think otherwise they'll try to go back to the old ones, so. Right, <laughs> right, right, and that's obviously not something that, um, Thank you. So, but although your question makes me think um, uh, of, of that reality that there will be people who, for whatever reason, are at CETE site uh, accessing information here on the public site, and, and we've got, it's the same thing. So as I said, enhanced navigation, interactive features, we have an auto autofill search, which pre-populates. If you're familiar with using uh, Google, all you need to do is type in a couple of letters and it will pre-populate a list for you. I've got a uh, picture of that. And there are geolocation search that allows you to set some parameters in um, so that you can search uh, whatever radius you want in terms of miles, I think is a unit of measure. Um, so we also have some new visualizations uh, that allows you with sort of some pop-up, you can see some demographic trend data and college career ready data. And again, it's difficult when you're not demoing this live, but we tried to take some snapshots. And so you can see here with the autofill, um, with just the three letters, um, G-O-O, you see Good Shepherd, Goodland, uh, Horse Good Middle, Goodland High, uh, Good Shepherd. And so that's a, I think that's um, sort of a, an arc, keeping up with the Joneses. It's nice that we have that on, on our site because it's there and in other locations. And the geolocation search allows you to, within five miles, within 10 miles, um, to think about what it is you're uh, looking for. Uh, I also, if, if any board members I cleared with our IT department, if any of you independently uh, would like more information on some of the functionality of the site, we have folks upstairs in IT and research and evaluation would be more than happy to sort of walk you through. Some of, sometimes features, uh, sometimes people ask questions in, you know, alone that they may not ask in a group. <laughs> I know I'm one of those persons, so. Uh, well, I'll ask one. <laughs> yes, sir. Do we have an app? I'm sorry? Do we have an app? We, I have a slide on that. So it is mobile friendly. So um, uh, that, that question came up. So it, uh, it, I've tried it out on my phone, so uh, on a demo, so I think it will work. Whether it's mobile not, friendly. Do we have an app? Uh, there is not at this point an app. So how, do I, how is it mobile friendly? Um, yeah, well. Yeah, the application is what I'm struggling with here. Um, we do not have an Apple 
an application in the sense of purchasing that app or whether not purchasing it, but a free sure. app. But it should work, it should be Apple friendly. I if I have the I'm technical saying. skills to go find it, yes, I can find it. Yes. So it's friendly, but it's not my friend. I think <laughs> I would say yes to that. <laughs> um, I'm not. Right, yes. right. Yes. So um, I, I owe you a better answer to that question. So nah, I'm it, gonna... It's something we might look at in the future. Yeah, yeah no. absolutely. I'm sorry? Yeah, it's just filler. Yeah, it's, yeah. And that, and you'll see that in other places. It's just, it's nonsense filler text. So going back um, to the interactive features here, and this is really difficult. But one of the things that I wanted to point out here is it is possible to uh, export the data. And this is, this to us is a big time saver because we have in the past lots of questions that, that you know, people find data on the on the report card, and they just want to export it to be able to use it. I want it in particular schools, but now this you can see here, you can export the data that we have in the CSV files, uh, various kinds of files that can be used and manipulated. Maybe that's a bad word. Um, uh, as per the person's person's preference. So, um, and that's a new feature. The value lines. It's difficult to show, but again, I, my my suggestion would be to get online and and uh, and use and just play around with it. And we're here to answer questions. Um, mobile friend, we talked about that. Some new visualizations, uh, demographic trend data, which we haven't had in the past. College career ready uh, measures, which we haven't had in the past. Um, and I think. I think that's it. So, questions? Steve Roberts. Thank you. Just an observation. Uh, your trend lines are better than what I was privileged to witness at the, the NAEP site. NAEP is undergoing a, a, a revolution, a, a, a refit, and I was privileged to help them for an hour and, uh, and look at their website. Uh, they have a tendency to have an up arrow or a down arrow after a lot of their trends, mm -hmm. which I try to explain to them is not healthy for us because people in the media will simply go to that arrow and say, okay, it's trending up, it's trending down, what's the deal, right? We can debate whether or not graduates of journalism schools are overworked. I don't think they are. But my compliments to you for not going that route for not simply trying to explain to people, we've got a thumbs up or a thumbs down. We've got too much of that going on. Kudos to you. Well, thank you. That's, um, that did come up, that very issue, as you said. Um, the tendency is to go to the end and ignore whether it's a four-year trend or a two-year trend or a six-year trend, and, and to ignore also whether the magnitude of that rise was also demonstrated earlier between just two years. <laughs> Along along the along the route, so that's um, something that we did we did look at. So so thank you. Any other? Sally Cobble. I liked our chairman's idea of an app for that. I'd like an app for Kansas Can. Yes, ma'am. You know, a lot of schools have their own apps now. Mm -hmm. So I'd love a Kansas Can app so I can do what my fellow board member down there, Janet Wall, can do, but I can do it faster. <laughs> it's all about competition. <laughs> Kathy Bush? So on the website, where do we find this? If you go to the main KSDE page, mm -hmm. and I... I I thought at one point that I would actually have a time today, at which point it would went live, but I hesitate to give a time because I, I just don't know. But if I recall on the main page under, if you go across the top, I believe it says data and reports across the top of the page, and it, you'll see report card. Data reports? Data and reports, I data think. Data and reports. Yeah. And you'll and see that pull down, you'll see it? Yeah. Okay. Right now, as of 8.30 this morning, it was the old report card. So, and it'll say building report cards or report cards? Yep. Okay. 
And Norma, we've, um, she's checking with Denise for us. Usually we have a banner that'll run on the homepage for a little while, but you can click there. Okay. Just for the, what's the most recent information. Okay, for, all right. For a short time, and then you'll have to find it there. Thank you. Okay. Well, it, it, it's alive. It is alive. And uh, it's, it's, it's the first day. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a great start. Thank you for your hard work and, and, and through the department for their uh, efforts to make this happen. I know you guys were leads and, and there's a lot of team members that worked hard. We appreciate it. A lot of work goes into this. And I know saying I want an app is, is, is kind of, oh, yeah, there's, there's more money and more time. And, you know, it's not as easy as just going to an app. But uh, uh, making this more accessible to the public would be a, a real step forward. You know, a, a long-term goal, hopefully in a short time, you know, <clears throat> that, that would be great. And I like the fact that we can extract things rather than doing the whole report. That, that's a real upgrade because I've had that situation. You know, i got to print the whole thing or, you know, so my technological skills are sometimes, they're evolving, they're growing, you know. Um, so we look forward to, uh, to, to hearing more later about this and how we move forward. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good job. Uh, let's take a uh, about a, a, a well, let's say a ten minute break, and we'll be back here at uh, about eleven or ten eighteen. Well, our next agenda item, our next agenda that, well, we we probably eleven twenty. <clears throat> Is monthly reports and requests for future agenda items, committee reports that will be through. And uh, this is our opportunity. Um, committee reports, anything to report from the legislative committee? Ken and Dina? I um, had opportunity or an invitation to uh, speak to um, an interim committee <clears throat> that was looking at the uh, bill, House Bill 2345, I believe it was, that would have, um, <clears throat> pre would preclude from service on a school board anybody who had a spouse or a sibling um, in working for a school district anywhere in the, st in the state um, in, any, in any capacity. So I, I, uh, went and spoke to them and uh, uh, just gave a short, my short analysis of it was that if it were to pass, it would exclude most people in the state of Kansas from, from serving on a, on a school board because education is the largest employer in the state, I think. And um, so I, my, my uh, counsel to them was just that that was an overreach and although you know, good ethics policy and enforcement of a good ethics policy is good for a, sc a school board. That bill was not going to help them, not necessary. So um, I don't know where that's going to go, but it'll probably be back for consideration in the legislature <coughs> in the next session. And um, so we just need to be looking out for that. You might want to speak to your representative about it if it uh, comes up again. But... Um, I think it kind of, I, I don't know if it got put to rest or not, but um, it just seemed to me to be a, 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 a huge stretch. And it only applied to service on a school board. It didn't apply to any other government or elected position in the state. Well, it did to us. Huh? It, it also impacted us. Yeah, right. Yeah. Or the state board, right. Yeah, so state school board, board members boards. or state board members were the only people impacted. Yeah, right. So any school board member. So I guess that was the extent of my uh, legislative work okay. exposure this well, time. Well, thank you for sharing those thoughts. Dina? <clears throat> and um, I plan to, if they're still meeting when we're finished, go across the street and observe what is happening at the uh, Special Committee on Education's meeting. Um, and 
Uh, right. Dina, what's the purpose of that group? Uh, to rewrite the the school formula, funding formula. But um, I don't know if it was a success one or in, it's in, yes, it's a success okay. one. But they're going about it in an interesting manner, much different <coughs> from my experience when I was in the legislature and we were working on a similar picture. Um, I also had the opportunity to go to a town meeting um, where I voiced uh, the uh, my kind of our thoughts about uh, the ESEA reauthorization to uh, Congressman Hillscamp. Um, obviously, my plea did not do very much, but um, he did acknowledge and uh, say at least thank you for my input. So um, I told him that um, we wanted to have di a dialogue with him and hopefully we could do so in the future. And um, he acknowledged that he thought that would be a good idea. We'll see how far that goes. But um, other than that, um, it's I've not done a whole lot other than than that with Janet Wall. Thank you. I just wanted to state that I just happened to see <coughs> it did pass eighty five to twelve. Uh, so the original twelve that didn't vote yesterday voted the other day. Eighty five to twelve ESSAs. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Um, uh, one of the things that I did last week was send a thank you to uh, uh, Pompeo and to uh, Representative Pompeo and Jenkins for voting yes. And it, it, I think it's, it, it behooves us to also reach out after the vote and, uh, and yes, short and sweet, you know. And we have been obviously in touch with uh, uh, Roberts and, and Moran's office as well. And uh, it sounds like we don't know who voted the 12, but uh, it was 12 the other day that didn't vote for moving it, whatever the vote was. Um, so, <clears throat> and so we'll see what happens next. The president said he's going to sign it, so we'll see. Okay. Um, board policy, Janet. I'm happy to report that the board policy committee is on sabbatical. Extended vacation, out of touch, whatever. Okay, well, we'll have to think of some things for you to do in, starting in January. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Now, communications team. <laughs> Sally? Okay. Um, the communications um, team has had the privilege of um, our board secretary and Denise and her team working and helping us develop the postcard series again. And uh, Denise kind of gave us a little outline on what she was uh, thinking to do. And um, I don't have them to present to you today, as we all know where Denise is. But um, Jim and I are looking over that outline. And um, one thing we did decide was that we probably cannot um, send in a postcard or repeat enough the Kansas can message and our and so a lot of our postcards are are going to be developed around that theme and that theory <coughs> and legislation starts uh, the Monday before we meet again so I'm sure the first one will be developed for you to look at by then and so that that is being done uh, Jim has been in contact with um, Abrams, yeah, and they're right. still trying to get us a date to... Um, 
But we haven't it. nailed down a date yet, just like we don't have the date yet for the state of the state. And um, I did get an email. I did ask. This is on another subject. Um, I did ask Jerry Moran yesterday. I called and asked why he was voting no. We did get a response back from him. I don't have it in front of me, but the essence of it is that he really wanted more flexibility in the law than even it was giving. And um, in, in talking to my fellow board member down here, Ken, uh, we both knew that Jerry um, wanted us to be able to give those state tests whenever we wanted, and maybe only three times. So I think that was probably around the issue of testing and giving us even more control. So, um, you know, can't blame him for that. And so, um, did I cover the whole gamut of our... Pretty much. The, the, um, the cards will, again, uh, be a lot of celebratory and, and, and highlighting, you know, uh, superintendents, teachers of the year, character, education, schools gonna of work, character. Yeah, we're, and we're going to work that all into our... Theme. Um, culture change of, of student first and um, she's got some great ideas so I, I, I'm comfortable for where we're going we'll have a, a, a listing of uh, an anticipated listing knowing full well that it will have flexibility especially at the end to respond and react to you know things that happen uh, in, 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 our, in our efforts as well as uh, across our state and I think she's going to use some of the things yes. out of these talking, talking points. points. So we're, it's a great opportunity to, to keep our voice in front of the, uh, um, the legislature and uh, across the state. Uh, also, as Sally mentioned, um, having a, a, a opportunity for Randy uh, and, uh, and Brad and, and the department to make a presentation to a, a joint session, a joint meeting of the uh, uh, House and, Ed Com and Senate Ed Committees. <clears throat> Excuse me, and um, we're working on that date. Uh, <clears throat> we've all agreed we like it to be early, but we're all basically waiting for um, just getting it on the calendar. There's just a hesitancy, it seems, to get it on the calendar until they know some other dates, you know, uh, as well as um, opening it up not just to the uh, the Ed uh, uh, committees, but uh, inviting others in as well. So. Um, We'll be in touch with uh, uh, Representative Hyland and Senator Abrams and uh, try to get that date uh, put together. Also, last year we had a, a, a dinner uh, that we uh, gathered together with the committees. Uh, we're looking at doing something similar. don't know if that's going to be it or what we're going to do, but we'll be in some way working with them. They uh, thought that was very beneficial, and I believe we did as well. So we'll be looking at that. Um, so that's the uh, communications team. Right. Okay. Um, ESI task force, Jim Porter. Thank you. The ESI task force will meet again tomorrow morning. Uh, it will uh, uh, it will consider a subcommittee report. If that report is adopted, uh, there are about a dozen areas where we have coalesced. Uh, and about two areas where we have not, uh, so we'll be dealing with, with, with those issues. But my and, and I think there's a real good possibility that the ESI task force will complete its work uh, tomorrow. We look forward to your final report. Thank you. Um, NASBY stipend, Kathy. Uh, just recently from NASBY, we received a request for an interim report. So Peggy has put together, and we worked on yesterday, uh, they basically had four questions that they wanted us to respond to, three of which were applicable to our particular stipend. <clears throat> so we talked about, uh, um, you know, things that we were proud of, and we talked about how we felt like we were able to strengthen partnerships and relationships <laughs> with some of the various organizations throughout the state, and talked specifically about the Kelly event and how a number of us were able to participate with that. Also, the United School Administrators and some of the other things and how we involved a large group of people in our uh, 
uh, meetings throughout the state, um, educators as well as uh, non-educators, business folks, and those kinds of things. And we thought they asked about policy work that had been uh, impacted and really, uh, you know, we kind of talked about the policy guidelines that we had reviewed this year and recently, but we really talked more about the policy work that we're doing as far as the vision and uh, the direction that we're going as far as the, uh, the state board and the department's concerned. And then the final <coughs> question that we replied to had to do with uh, uh, unanticipated items. And, you know, we talked about some things, for instance, the, you know, the number of these organizations uh, had new leaders this year. So we were able to kind of reestablish relationships with them, some of those organizations. So uh, that was a piece that was a, a little bit of an, in some cases, unanticipated because we didn't know some of these changes were going to occur. occur. Uh, we also talked a little bit about the, uh, uh, when we went out to the public, the strong voice we heard for non-academic skills. Um, so uh, not that that was unanticipated, but maybe Maybe we were surprised the strength of that response to us. So um, we will be turning this in this next week, and then there will be a final report uh, April in April. Um, we also are looking at continuing to look at uh, outreach outreach opportunities. As you know, uh, uh, with a number of organizations that uh, we are working on uh, uh, strengthening our relationships. Uh, the Kansas PTA, I think Janet's going to a meeting there in January, uh, maybe some others, and the KNEA, the uh, Kansas Board of Regents, we were finally able after a, a lot of attempts to get a meeting established on, uh, uh, as I recollect, January 4th, so we are reestablishing that, that group. And then the uh, uh, Kansas Association of School Boards, our ongoing relationship with them, some others, the Council of Superintendents and uh, uh, the superintendent association so we're looking at trying to get with them um, hopefully in February uh, we're still trying to pin some of that down uh, Carolyn and I are on Keisha board so we continue to work with them and United School Administrators uh, Jim has been working regularly with the uh, Kansas Alliance of Educational Advocacy so Jim's been attending those meetings so it's a lot of organizations out there that we're really working hard to uh, outreach and have uh, have those conversations with. If you can think of other organizations that uh, we need to add to this list, you might let me know that uh, because even though the stipend, uh, we have a, we used all the money up to I think 54 cents, so uh, the stipend is completely expended, so uh, we were very efficient in our use. I think use there's some that. postage there for your report. There you go, one final stamp to, to mail it in. Uh, so uh, we were very efficient in the use of our stipend and were able to uh, get this started. And I mean, our, our goal certainly as a board is con to continue to maintain these relationships and also mentioning the communications team's uh, work with the legislature. So that's where the stipend work is at this point. May I ask her a question? Yes, Sally Cobble. Thank you. Um, Kathy, one of the communication goals um, is that we keep our doors open and our visitation with the K board in that technical advisory. Mm -hmm. And I wondered if, um, if in your January 4th meeting, and this may not be necessary, um, Randy, you tell me if it's, if it's not, if you've already done this, but I think it's really important that we get Randy and um, the presentation that we've been taking different places in front of K-Board and, and the techno, technical advisory. And um, I wondered if we could meet with them and K-Board and the technical, all of us, and have Randy do a presentation. And then maybe they can ask questions or maybe have some suggestions. I know I'm, I've already done one community college and technical school. They've asked for a presentation, so. We'll certainly bring that up. Okay. Um, Randy, have you been before them or have a plan to go? No, I've not been before them. And I, don't, I might suggest that if we get the um, state of the state time, that they, have, they come and we're here, that maybe that might be a good date. Might be. 
that we're all here. And I don't know that we have to have dinner or anything. We could just all meet. We might be able to come up with some cookies. So. Cookies. Cookies. So whoever made the pound cake, thank you. It was awesome. Maybe they'd yes, make the pound cake. Very good. Cake. Well, thank you. Any other uh, committee's reports or get them all? Um, our board attorney report, Mark. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Lots of news. I submitted uh, a monthly detailed report of my activities in the previous month uh, in order to supplement that. And the emails that I sent out last week was a number of attachments that um, provided you with the uh, various briefing on the Gannon and Petrella cases. Um, I. I've tried to give you a little bit of a uh, more uh, summary, although one board member suggested that they really just wanted to know whether this was a good good for us or bad for us. That person will go unnamed, but um, I tried to at least distill it down because it is it is it's not easy in the in uh, particularly in in the Petrilla case when you have that saga that's gone on for nearly five years. You can't it, there's not uh, as many opportunities to just say it's good or bad, uh, one or the other. It's um, Most of the time it's in between. Although, yes, on Monday, there was a good development in that uh, the Supreme Court de uh, declined to uh, the petition for certification or certiori um, that was filed by uh, the Petrella plaintiffs. So the um, it's at least at this stage, it will not be before the U.S. Supreme Court, and uh, we will be waiting on the court's uh, decision, the District Court of Kansas decision with regard to uh, plaintiff's request to stay that proceeding. Um, Scott Gordon and I met with the Assistant Attorney General this morning to talk a little bit about strategy and how to proceed with um, further briefing on the Petrella case, so there'll be more to, to advise you on there. So um, I'm certainly, uh, there's a lot of information that I shared with you. Um, i happy to answer any questions, specific questions that you might have about about that. Does anybody have any questions about those emails and the uh, attached briefing? Do these cases ever go away? Well, uh, <laughs> in the case of Petrella, uh, likely not. It's going to it's going to be a long it's going to be a long haul. Um, the other uh, the other development uh, is that recently we I was contacted by the negotiated the chief negotiator for the school for the the deaf. Uh, the Professional Negotiations Act was amended this past year, and the date for uh, exchanging letters, which was previously February 1st, has been moved back to March 31st. So the, the inquiry was whether or not we could just, by side agreement, uh, continue to use the February 1 date, which is in the best interest of the administration anyhow, because they have to issue contracts and they have to do a number of things. And so after talking with the School for the Deaf Administration, we're, we're in agreement that we will keep the February 1 date for our purposes of exchanging letters. Uh, the statute also changed the, um, the mandatorily negotiable and the permissible unnegotiable items and, and uh, says that may select not more than three additional terms and conditions uh, to be negotiated. Uh, I will give you a heads up that uh, in the in the Previous years, um, there hasn't been as big of a push for uh, compensation as being part of the negotiation because the state statute says that the school for the deaf, the the uh, salaries and, and benefits will be no less than the uh, what what is uh, paid to the Olathe schools, uh, but the argument that's been advanced. Um, Two years ago, and much stronger this year, and I think that it's uh, it's it will gain s steam. Although I don't think it'll gain a lot of traction in terms of um, any changes, but the argument is well, the the language just simply says it's no less than. It doesn't say it can't be greater than uh, Olathe. So they've tried to emphasize that in the negotiations, and I think that will be something that will be uh, pushed much harder by that negotiation team. Um, so that that'll be something that we'll bring to you uh, in January or usually what happens is the process is get together with the administration of school for the deaf and identify what issues uh, need to be uh, 
addressed or um, negotiated and uh, put those in the letter and then ask the board for uh, the representatives and, and permission to move forward with those negotiations. The good news is that uh, in, in terms of having a, uh, in the past, it hasn't been very protracted and there have, they've been a few issues. The bad news is, is that because it's a relatively new contract, uh, they've tried to go to, to one year cycles, which means you end up you know, doing this uh, every year. So um, I don't anticipate any huge problems other than what, I, what I've identified here. Um, I guess the last item would be that uh, I'd like to dispel any vicious rumor that the reason I didn't make it to N Nicosia was because I was attending a uh, World Series game, which was that same week. That was, that was not the basis for my, uh, my last minute cancellation. Um, and although that would have been a good one, I, I traded, uh, I bet on the long term and, and didn't use my tickets that week in exchange for tickets in game six, which never came to fruition. So I, I lost out on that bet, but no, I had another obligation. Um, and it cost me, I think, a, a bar tab for about 30 lawyers next year when it's in, in Kansas City, um, because <laughs> I wasn't there, so I got elected to host. Uh, but the good news is that the registration fee uh, that I paid for this year for the attendance at the conference will be uh, carried over to next year, so my registration fee will be uh, covered uh, for next year's conference in Kansas City. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any questions? Okay. Uh, individual board reports. Steve Roberts. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I was privileged to spend an hour with some folks who are helping NAEP uh, redesign their website. And you heard me speak to uh, uh, Scott about that. My suggestion to them was don't try to tell people how things are trending. Uh, let, let people read for themselves. We want to encourage people to read well and, and understand numbers. Um, I'm going to try to work on some language to try to get reading and, and arithmetic into our definition somehow. I don't know. I think that's our business. And I think we spend um, a lot of time on secondary and high school when the real rubber meets the road in primary. And so I'm, I'll try to work language for that. Um, when Kathy speaks of, of building partnerships and strengthening relationships with folks like KNEA, um, and, and I go out and I say something like, when you get right down to it, teaching is not union work. I'm not trying to tear people down. And so I just want to explain my situation right now and why I, I'm inclined to say that. Um, w when I was asked to interview for the position I have now in Brown County at Kickapoo, they said they wanted to pay $42,000 for the job, and I, I couldn't do it. So I, I was able to negotiate a salary of 58000 which made it doable for me. And I'm just, I'm wondering how common that situation would be. And uh, I can't tell you that I'm a great teacher and successful and all the kids are doing well because it's a, it's a, there are challenges. But I don't think I'm overpaid. And my understanding is that the average teacher salary in Kansas is 54000 So if that's correct, then I'm 4000 over the average, obviously. But it would be my hope that as we put kids ahead of the system that we can get folks with the, the union perspective to move, hopefully not too gradually, but fairly quickly toward a more professional um, professional association or, or something. Because I think part of where we, we need to go is we need to have professional teachers at least at some levels negotiating their own salaries. Whether that's just for technical subjects in secondary school, I, I, I don't know. But I think that's part of, part of our future. Um, with that, I just want to uh, apologize for taking the board's time yesterday with what may have been perceived as a selfish issue, and I apologize for that. Uh, basically, I took a shot at trying to do some good for some kids, and I hope you understand that my heart was in the right place, and I mean no disrespect to this board at all. And when we have disagreements, I hope we can keep them respectful, and I'll do my best to do just that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Dina Horst. Well, um, my biggest um, 
involvement, I guess, was, was with Kansas Teacher of the Year. Um, and as I think many of you know, um, I had the opportunity of serving on the selection committee, and that was really exciting to see how the results all turned out. And uh, I can tell you that all of those individuals had special qualities, and um, it was a tough decision. And while I wasn't, wasn't there for the large uh, viewing of the videos, I was able to view them separately uh, prior <laughs> because it conflicted with, with NASB. And uh, it, was, it was rewarding to see the outcome. And I sat next to the table of the family of um, the winner. And that family was overwhelmed with, with excitement and emotion. Um, and to see the, um, just how they reacted to the reward was it, a reward in itself. So thank you for allowing me to serve on that selection committee. It, it was a, um, a great opportunity and something that um, was very rewarding to me as a former teacher. Um, and we are requesting future agenda items during this time as well. Um, I have been approached by um, actually the American Heart Association. I have some connections with them. Um, and they, they would like to have the opportunity to to share with with this body uh, some of the things that they do within schools, um, as well as some things they'd like to offer to schools. Um, I also serve on a board of the Kansas Center uh, for Health that is in Halstead, and they go out um, and present in school districts as well as have, they have a location in Halstead where uh, students actually come for instruction as well. And so I thought maybe if we maybe looked at all of those entities that provide services, um, those private organizations that um, provide services to our schools or work with our schools in some manner, that it would be good for us to know uh, what all of those are. Um, because I didn't know, for example, that the American Heart Association did all the things that they do with, with schools. So um, at any rate, that would be my request that we look into maybe not having them all together, but spreading them out and uh, hearing how they share their expertise with our students. Thank you. Thank you. Jim Porter. 
Thank you. I made a presentation to the Greenbush South Superintendents Group on our Kansas CAN. Uh, I have a regular spot on their agenda, so I'll be meeting with them oh, three or four times a year to, for an update with that process. I can't be there every time because <coughs> like tomorrow they meet, and that's also an ESI time, but that gives me an opportunity to have regular conversations with them. Uh, for future agenda items, in the event that ESI finishes tomorrow, I would like to report their, their recommendations next month. In the event that they don't, I'd like to do it in February. Uh, and I can tell Peggy tomorrow afternoon uh, where we are on that. Also, uh, there's an annual ESI report that the department gives to us, uh, and I would like for those to be done simultaneously. So uh, it, it can be ready in January. So I hope that uh, I hope I'm requesting for a January report. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Jan Janet Waugh. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I wanted to report on my meeting uh, that I attended on your behalf, the Kansas Con Confidence in Kansas Public Education Group. Uh, and uh, first of all, if you recall, we discussed the Governor's Scholars Program last month. I discussed it, and I wanted to report to you. I told you we had some challenges. Well, our biggest challenge right now is we have $67.60 in the bank, <laughs> you know, which is quite a challenge. And we intend to send out a letter, you know, hopefully uh, to uh, be able to get some funding. <laughs> you know, we haven't had much luck on, uh, in the other ways, so we're going to try this and hopefully we can get it because this is too important of a program to not continue. My next thing I wanted to do is I would like to simply, I would like to, not simply, but I would like to ask board members' permission or agreement, not permission, I guess because each of you are his permission, whatever. One thing we discussed at our meeting, you know, we have the challenge awards every year. As you know, our test scores, we just got them today, which we normally have these in the fall, which we can then distribute the challenge awards, like in, I believe in November is when we've normally done it. And we have a banquet, and it's a, quite a big deal, and, and our schools love it, and it's, it's quite a recognition because a challenge award is really special, in my opinion. You know, I think it's one of the special awards we do give. Well, because it's so late this year, uh, we felt it's going to be quite a challenge <laughs> to have a, a dinner, to schedule it and everything. So during our discussion, what we came up with, and this, this is where I kind of volunteered you all individually. <laughs> so please tell me whether you're not willing to do this, I guess, is I suggested, and they were kind of excited about it, that uh, this would work well, that we allow, that we let every board member go to their winning schools, set up a meeting, maybe, you know, work through the superintendent or the principal or something, have, uh, make a big deal of it, go there and have an assembly or a meeting or something, you know, to make this presentation and also invite the local uh, senator and representative to attend, which I think would get, be great for them also. And the, we would develop a script for the, each board member to read you know, uh, to set, tell what the challenge award is and why they received it and everything. And so anyway, I did that. <laughs> so my question is, are you willing to do this? Sure. <laughs> of course, Janet. Thank you. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Uh, little timeline issues. When would we be getting the okay. notice of, uh, of challenge award uh, recipients? It's my understanding that uh, uh, we should have this information the 1st of February. And then the department will be notifying us uh, and writing our script, you know, of uh, who, who, which of our, who, which schools did receive this, you know. And then it would be up to us to contact each individual school to make the arrangements because, or if, like I say, if you represent Wichita, for instance, you may want to contact the central office and make arrangements through there. Like if KCK, a bunch of them went, I'd contact the superintendent there. Uh, and then uh, you could make your own arrangements. Okay. And the, the, we're willing to work with you, the committee, if you need help on sending out letters or talking with people. We'll, well, we're willing to work. But a lot of it will fall right in, in your laps. But you have to do it at your schedule where your schedule would permit it. Would we be uh, also engaging uh, task force members who would like to show up for these presentations? I would think so. That's what we, we suggested 
during the discussion, we suggested that maybe some task force members that were in the area might attend also, you know, so I think that they would be interested in attending. Or if we can't have a task force member, you know, we're represented on uh, the, uh, on this committee, there's KASB, there's KNEA, there's USA, there's, uh, let me think, PTA, uh, excuse me, help me, Tom. <laughs> And so I think we, what was suggested is if we don't have a specific member there, we might have a representative from each of these groups. You know, if they could have a representative in that area. But the priority would be for us to schedule it, you know, to take our schedule would be I'd the priority. It would be our schedule, because we would be making the actual presentation. Right. And uh, I think that's important. And I think that, you know, hopefully if we get our senator and representative, they may want to say a few words. Or well, something. then who's going to contact you know, the other group representatives. Uh, it, it, we might think about how we could facilitate that. I would think, I, well, let me contact the committee on sure. that because the committee then, uh, I think the committee could have uh, recommendations for that sure. because we would have to put it to, like for instance, Tom's our member on KASB and he could find members of school boards association. I'm just trying to facilitate a, a way we can uh, contact those uh, support groups right. that are part of this without having to make 25 phone calls. Exactly. Well, let me talk with, uh, let me send this out to the group and we can make some discussion, or, you know, we'll have a discussion on this and on how we could do the, have the okay. contacts. But I think as soon as we can get the, the information out and then each board member because we'll know where it's at, then, then the committee will have to see, of course, who sure. where it is, and then they could make recommendations from each of their groups. Okay. And all I do is represent you guys that volunteer you for things. Thank you. <laughs> I know you'd appreciate it. Well, I'm just trying to make it a little uh, easier and inclusive as well. Not no, easier, no, I appreciate that. There are some details I think that yeah. we need to hammer it's out. It's easy for me to get there, but when I have to make sure 20 other people are contacted, you know, I, I just no, want to make sure we facilitate it in a way that meets everybody's And especially for every, everybody's every goals. school that you're yeah. going to have to attend. But, I mean, like, some people won't have as big a challenge. Like, Kathy, you probably, well, no, you probably do. You have four senators, so you could, you do have it more of a, you have the same challenge as all of us have. Well, she's only got about two schools. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, I, we'll try to get a few more details, and we will, uh, sure. I'll work through, we'll work through Denise. Denise is, I'm assuming, not here again today. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. We'll work through her and the committee, and we'll get more information out to you as we know more. Okay. okay. Thank you. Very good. Uh, Challenge Award is a wonderful award. It's a great award. And yeah, principals and, and schools are all over it. They just, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's the one award that we give for, for uh, meeting the challenge of, of those students who typically don't do it well. Oh, absolutely. No, yeah. I think this is the one the schools really look forward to. Yes. And... Uh, but they, was, they, they tended to be excited about this. They thought maybe this might even, uh, the th reaction was that they thought maybe this might even get more local press, yeah. you know, being locally, and we might be able to get the press there. And, uh, and every school wants more press. Certainly. That'd be great. Thank positive you. things. So anyway, hopefully this will be very positive, and uh, I will contact the <laughs> committee and see what we can go, Thank what you. we need to do from there. Good deal. Thank you. Carolyn Campbell. Thank you, sir. Um, Keisha, uh, we had, and I have to apologize to um, our administrative assistant down on the corner, legally secretary. Um, it was only one day. We cut it down to one day. I was paid for two, but I'll have a credit. Um, but the main thing that was, again, was discussed is uh, we had a presentation on the classification committee. We were still working on um, that major project. Bill Affleck, no, Affleck, that fall check. <laughs> and um, wonderful, is it Mike? Uh, you just retired. Castles? Mm -hmm. There are chair people that are working on that. So then Kansas Teacher of the Year, I attended that, and I was uh, fortunate to sit with one of the nominees um, and her family, Ms. Crenshaw, from the Lawrence School District. And the nice thing that I thought was very special that um, 
10 seats, but there was only nine of us. And at that 10th seat was a picture, a tribute to her mother and father, who are both deceased. So her parents were there with us that night. Uh, did, and um, then the Kansas Volunteer Commission, our last um, December meeting was a conference call meeting. And um, Rachel Henderson, she reported on My Brother's Keepers, which is a quality mentoring program of uh, diversity beyond the color. And one of the things that, and I haven't gotten back with her one-on-one -on -one because I didn't want to take a lot of time on the conference um, call, but I am curious, um, um, they, the background checks and KBI and I'm, and I'm going to, you know, sort of get more information on what some of these other organi mentoring organizations are doing to make sure, because they have a lot in place, because I think a lot of times I'm concerned that we, our districts, um, especially with the transportations to um, companies, um, I just want to make sure that everybody around our children are safe. And um, we approved this this week, this month the different uh, volunteer generation re, um, groups, um, the applications that uh, that we but we reviewed those that day, and we elected our ch our new officers, and so that was it, I believe. I'm supposed to. Oh no. Okay, we have to ask him for travel. That's it. Thank you. Okay. Sally Cobble. Thank you very much. I attended a couple of meetings. Um, Teacher of the Year, Dean, I'm so thankful that you um, got to meet that family. They're very special, and um, I can't tell you how thrilled the city of Dodd City was that he received that award because he is thought so highly of in town and is known as a teacher that even if he doesn't have you in class, he's approachable. And um, so I, I think that says a lot about him. Every time I hear him talk, he makes me cry. He just, it just comes from the heart and the soul on him. Um, so I, you know, I was really pleased. You would have thought that I received it that day because, of course, I was up jumping around in the back of the room like he was my own child or that. <laughs> so Justin Coffey is his name. And he has a wife that is also a teacher, and she is excellent also. Um, and a little boy that he just dotes on. Yes. They do everything as a family. Um, ECS, Education Commission of the States. I've been struggling with this, and they put me on the steering committee now. So I'm a, a voting member, and I'm, I guess, supposed to do wonderful things. Not quite what wonderful things I'm supposed to do yet. But... Um, it's an organization that is over 50 years old, and I cannot keep telling you this enough, that it's the governors that put this together. And, it, and it's the governors, the legislators, they have some, um, some of the states are represented also with, and they come as a team. It's supposed to be a team approach to what's going on in your state. And I really felt sad when I w was at this meeting this year because I was the only one there. And I, all I kept thinking about is here I am hearing this finance section, and I really wished that somebody off of the committee that is helping to design a new formula for the state of Kansas was sitting with me because there were so many people talking about what works and what doesn't work, what works in a block grant, what doesn't work in a block grant, what waitings and, and, and not waitings. And so I really missed my other colleagues to hear what I was hearing. But 
We are not a member. Our state does not pay dues to ECS. They are graciously keeping us as a state in their membership because in the past we have shown so much leadership and it's usually been uh, Randy through our CCSO. And um, which I would dearly, when you get up and, and going, be glad to give you my place back. <laughs> Let you be the steering committee and I'm a commissioner. <laughs> but um, I, I, they think that they just believe that Kansas is at an, an all-time low. That's pretty bad when, when uh, they don't say that outright, but they kind of hint that we're just going through some troubling waters and that we will be back. And they want to keep us in the loop, but I think it's in the loop because we have a lot to offer. Uh, you go to that meeting and people want to sit with people from Kansas. Um, we had a discussion, Jim and I did, about Alaska. Um, he had the, the chairman of Alaska talking to him at NASB. I had the state senator talking to me about Alaska, a board member, and the commissioner of Ed of Alaska, because they experienced a not so smooth testing, like our testing. And um, I assured him it gets better, and we all agreed that, you know, Mary Ann, if it wasn't for Mary Ann and her um, personal character and whatever that we might have thrown our hands up a few times in the development of these assessments, but that um, she says and does what she does. And the poor commissioner from Alaska um, job is on the line because of this assessment. But they are a state that is using the same assessments that we are. Something just thrown out on there. The whole meeting was about assessments and about finance. Then I go to the steering committee and they're talking about student-driven curriculum, student-driven systems. Yeah, they're all starting to talk about student-driven systems. But oh, is there a whole lot of talk around that and what that would look like. I very boldly stood up and said that Kansas has done a statewide um, research of our, our people in the state and suggested that they highly use us at the next ECS meeting and ask our commissioner to come in and Brad. I do not know if they will accept that invitation um, that I provided for them, but I really think their meeting will not be as good if they don't. Because quite frankly, I'm tired of going to these national meetings in which we are so much farther ahead, but we are not the one up there anybody is listening to for leadership. And, and um, so we'll just remain our silent great state because we know Kansas can. The rest of my time has been spreading the word about Kansas can, and which brings me to um, challenge all of you, if you have a community college or a technical school in your area, that you visit with the board members because it, what we are trying to do is very much going to affect their curriculum and how they do things with our schools. And um, that's just a suggestion. I did one and caused quite a stir. In doing this, I find out that the public loves our vision. It is their vision. They love our vision. But when you get down to the people that have to produce this vision, they're back in the culture of what we have to change. And so uh, we need to, to bring along cultural change among our own in this. They all have concerns about how they're going to do the IP, individual plans of study. 
because they no one has counselors anymore. And if they did keep a money for a counselor, a lot of them have moved to social study, um, social workers, just like in your your place. So it's interesting to go out in the public and, and do this. Um, without breaking down all of those silos, we can't be successful, I don't think. Agenda items. I just want to tell you that when you develop the agenda, I as one really appreciated the order in which you put things. Uh, yesterday afternoon, listening to the schools and that placement of that, instead of having to do a lot of heavy thinking and putting that, that type of action in the mornings for us, I just want you to know I really appreciated that. And so I guess as my future agenda, I would really appreciate if you would keep that in mind again because um, it helped me sitting here and it helped me thinking and making decisions. Help with travel time for, for our guests to come in the Is, afternoon. Oh, it was a win-win. I don't know who it helped, but it helped me. And you know. We brought that up in the, in the meeting. Thank you. John Bacon, Ken Willard. On the um, consent agenda, we approved the awarding of grants um, to five schools for STEM mentoring uh, through the volunteer, uh, Kansas Volunteer Commission. Carolyn and I both serve on that committee, and I was asked to serve on the uh, grant level committee. And we reviewed grants from, I think, 10 or 12 different programs and approved five of them. Uh, they're grants for $20,000 each for STEM mentoring. And um, <clears throat> in that process, uh, one, of the gr one of the grantees uh, that was accepted in their application put forward justification for their wanting to improve the situation at their school some numbers and um, uh, that I couldn't justify for their um, AYP over the past five years. And uh, they were, when I first saw them, I was shocked because they just showed a steady decline and not only in their school district, but in the state. So I went to our report card and looked at what, it, and, and our, our numbers were totally or diametrically opposed to theirs. So I contacted uh, Brad uh, Nunswander and said, do you have any idea where these numbers come from? He didn't, but I found out in the, in the clarification portion of this um, process that their numbers came from Kids Count. Well, I would like to have some, someone look at what they're putting out and determining why our numbers are so dramatically different from these. These were state assessment numbers? Yeah. And um, so, you know, based on that, that's one that we approved that I couldn't vote because I just couldn't justify the numbers. So I'm not going to name that school district, but I'll talk with any you individually about it if, if you would like. But it was a very interesting process. Not necessarily my cup of tea reading grant requests. <laughs> that's, Been there, done that. That <laughs> used me up. But um, I also <coughs> had... Uh, I think at your, the chairman's suggestion um, a month or so ago, I just contacted the K board about attending one of their meetings, and I did the one in Wichita, Wichita State, uh, and it was very interesting. I didn't have an opportunity to speak or organize or anything, but I was thinking that it would have really been a good idea if somebody had been there and able to present our vision and, and uh, just talk about how that intersects with. Uh, closely uh, with what they're doing. So I think that's that needs to be pursued, probably. Um, and there was another thing that I wanted to mention that I cannot remember what it is, so maybe I'll think of it before we wrap up. Okay. okay? Thank you. We'll come back. Kathy Bush. Oh, thank you. Um, I also attended the Kansas Teach of the Year Banquet, which was always a wonderful event, so I <coughs> really did enjoy that. And I've had the opportunity... <laughs> excuse me, lately, 
and several times uh, coming up in the future to present the information on the, the Kansas can, the data, and uh, the several different groups. And uh, I tell you, they've really appreciated it. They enjoy it. Uh, I always like to challenge them to think about, you know, okay, now what do you do now? Uh, so um, with this information, I think people are, especially since now ESEA has been reauthorized, we can certainly move forward with uh, the idea that uh, the, uh, our new vision certainly aligns with the reauthorization. So uh, I've been enjoying that opportunity to do that. So thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> Mr. Chair. Yes. Oh, Ken's I, I got it. it was, All right. It was a good thing, and I'm glad I remembered it. Thank you. Yesterday, when we had the presentations from those three schools, um, the uh, school that brought there, is, I thought, just knocked it out of the park. And I said to them, you know, these other schools uh, could go to school on what you've done today, because if you really want to impress us or get our attention, let's let kids be a part of these presentations rather than somebody coming here and reading a report on what they're doing. So, and that's not a criticism of all three great, great programs. But um, I've never suggested this before, and in fact, I've come to the idea over a, quite a long period of time. And a lot of state boards have uh, a student representative on the board, not in a voting capacity, but just as a uh, as a presence to kind of give perspective on some things, maybe from a student position. And I'm thinking that might be something we ought to take a look at sometime and maybe set up a process whereby um, uh, different students have an opportunity to compete uh, for the opportunity to come and be a board meeting and just sit in and listen to our discussion. And I think it could be educational for the students as well as probably educational and helpful to us. Um, it would require some expense probably and a lot of logistics to work out, but it's been done in a number of other places. I know NASB's really high on this idea, and I've never really been that high on it, but I'm just thinking that it may be worth considering in my old age. I'm thinking that. So. We, 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 we all grow. <laughs> uh, I, I would agree, um, and, and for a future agenda item, I'd like to talk about that and, yeah. and see what we could do, especially as it's related to our new vision. Mm -hmm. um, there are many groups that have uh, student advisory groups that, that can meet. There are, I think, Peggy, 13, 14, 17 states. Yeah, we did an, we did an analysis of states that have uh, uh, direct uh, student participation and indirect student participation on their boards. You know, Jim Porter? When I was at the new board member workshop, there was a, a student representative from Massachusetts who was, in fact, a member, a voting member of their Board of Education. And I thought that was real interesting. This guy was really sharp, you know. So, yeah. so uh, I, I think something that's worthy of discussion. How better to understand students than to talk to them? Yeah. Uh, exactly. So uh, I, I see that as a, a future <laughs> agenda item. Yeah. Might not be January. We're kind of, kind of packed in there, but, you know, yeah. we'll... We, we need to get it there. I think it should be part of our new vision. It's, a, it's one of those things that uh, uh, we should do uh, because we're talking about them. They should have a voice, and them should have a voice. Well, thank you, Ken. Thanks for remembering that. Okay. <clears throat> um, I have a couple of things that I'd like to share with you, but first I'd like to uh, deal with our, our, our – we rec Ken received – direct. I don't know if I received it, you received it, I guess I, I can't remember which one of us got it, on the master teacher. Uh, the master teacher uh, selection committee uh, would like to have a state board member, and I'm wondering who on our state board has served on that before? Anyone? On a master teacher program, master teacher's award, yes. <laughs> yes. You, you communicated with me on that, asking yes. if I had served okay. on it, and I have not. So okay. I, yeah. I don't have any experience okay. with that. Um, I did serve on it. I served on it, but this has been years and years and years. This is back in my PTA days. Okay. So it's probably been, you know, 20, 30 years ago that I did serve on it. So. Well, they have requested um, that we uh, uh, have a, a member from our, our state board on their selection, participate in their selection day, which is Wednesday, February 17th at uh, Emporia State University from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. 
Is there anyone interested in participating in that? I'd be happy. Carolyn? I'm interested in volunteering to somebody. <laughs> You're in the legislature way too much. <laughs> well, I was just thinking we have these. February 17th. I was, we have these educators here on this board, and I just thought Dina Horse, um, she, she likes she would be great. delving into things like this. She would be an excellent choice. Even better. Congratulations. Yes. Wonderful. No, and in, in fact, it makes you very attractive for this position. No, seriously. You know, I've, I've had some connections with them over the years, but I've had a couple of teachers that have certain. I think Dina would be great. <laughs> well, regrettably, I can't do it. I'm in Arizona playing golf, so I um, know that sounds you, trivial. You but I've already that. bought the tickets, so I'm. But Dina would be, I, I would be happy, Dina, if you would take that. February 17th, I'll send you the information that I have and alert them. That would be great. Dina, you'd be wonderful at it. Thank you. No, I'm going to be in Arizona playing golf. I just checked my calendar. No, I'm, it's a family commitment I made. I know. Always thinking of yourself first. <laughs> Thank you. So, Dean, I'll, get, I'll be in touch with you about the details. Yes, sir. Um, I, I suffer from the same condition as Ken Willard. I forget things from time to time. Good things that need to be reported. Uh, got to see Randy take a selfie in front of a bunch of kids. I don't know if you mentioned the farmer's no, insurance. Uh, kindergarten teacher at St. Joseph's uh, Catholic School in Shawnee got a $100,000 grant from farmer's insurance. She's got her kindergartner's coding. So uh, Janet and Randy and I were privileged enough to spend all of about 20 or 30 minutes with them because they got right to it. I mean, the principal said a couple of words, and the farmer's guys get up, and they talk for about 30 seconds, and here's your check. And well, that's an efficient way to do it. The other thing, the other good thing was I was invited to participate in the red stocking stuffer breakfast that the Cairns Children's Service League does. I guess they do it in Emporia and Wichita and various places, Dodge. So um, uh, it was my first time doing that, and I'm hooked. So if they ask me again, I'll, I'll be happy to uh, wear my red coat, as it were. Great opportunities. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> I want to uh, direct your attention to your folders. There is the 216 calendar of meeting dates, and we do have some meeting date changes. That, you know, you, we need to pay attention to in your long-term planning uh, to make sure that they're there. We did we, we, uh, interesting accommodations. So uh, there's invitations in your packet also to the SEAC breakfast <coughs> and uh, in our January meeting, and uh, that's uh, an early. Those are, we, we we've got January is always a busy time because then we have lunch with student officers, a leadership from uh, CTE uh, Career and Tech Ed, isn't it? it um, that we have at that time. Those are both in January. So. Pay attention to those. We've, we've, we'll be busy in January. We also obviously have the un unannounced date of the uh, governor's uh, state of the state address. We can anticipate, but we, I, I would dare say, I don't, if any. Right, it, it could be Monday night, it could be Tuesday, it could be Wednesday. Uh, yes, so uh, uh, stay tuned, you know, for that. Um, <clears throat> I have a, an update on the governor's, uh, Lieutenant Governor's uh, Community Service Award. Uh, uh, Janet spoke for a moment about uh, the Confidence in Education and the Governor's uh, Scholars Award, which are two long-time <coughs> programs. I don't know how long the Confidence in Education Awards have been going on, but the Governor Scholars Award has is, is, is been awarded 
consecutively for 33 years and has uh, fallen on hard times. Um, the uh, new award of, of possibly recognizing uh, uh, one or two individuals from each accredited high school in our state that the Lieutenant Governor is proposing is a wonderful idea that everyone has been excited about, but at the same time, they don't want to uh, start a new award in the sense of losing uh, recognition programs that are already well in well uh, uh, traditions within our, our schools. So um, I conveyed to him that our first priority in terms of, of support and, and, and both uh, administratively as, as well as financially was to existing programs. And his uh, comment was, well, what do they need? And I shared with him some of the needs that had been expressed to me, and he said, we'll take care of it. So uh, uh, he and I are going to be meeting. Um, we're both juggling right now. We've been sending messages back today. We'll be meeting uh, next week, hopefully, uh, and either in Kansas City or in Topeka uh, or Wichita, maybe Wichita. No, probably in Kansas City or Topeka. And uh, I will probably, through Peggy, be getting some information out to you uh, uh, if there's any real substantive updates on, on the Lieutenant Governor's Award. I, I do want to make clear that I, I have, a, a, as, a, as, a, as you know, a principal, uh, a, a great deal of, of uh, commitment uh, to the Confidence and Education Task Force and, and Governor Scholars Award and all the different groups, the variety of groups, as we heard talking about the Confidence Group, hey, and are part of this. Um, it's, it, it's, it, it, we need to, uh, 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 the commitment has to be to maintain these. And uh, Lieutenant Governor, uh, Collier was uh, w was agreeable, you know. So we'll hopefully be moving ahead, and uh, all ships will rise, you know. So uh, it's 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 a good deal. Um, <coughs> uh, some of the things most recently, I just returned from an Achieve conference uh, that was uh, nominally called, you know, state leaders and and policymakers uh, conference, and there were probably. I don't know, about rep represented. And at this conference, uh, one of the big themes was graduation, uh, which we were talking about earlier today. What, is, what does graduation mean? How do you count it? You know, how do you think about it? How do you manage it? How do you manipulate it? Uh, are, the, are the graduation counts that we're seeing actually, you know, uh, what we call valid numbers? You know, how there are so many variations on how students are gaining getting diplomas today. Um, but we also talked about the transition from high school into post-secondary and in terms of what that means and how their, their lines are blurring as well. You know, that what, concurrent credit, um, simultaneous enrollment, uh, kids' early graduations, you know. Um, so there, there, there's, there's a, um, a, like an ebb tide of, of, of sorts going on in our, our in, in graduation lines are not as clear as they once were. So that, that was a main thrust. Plus there was also the political side in terms of pollsters from Washington talking about the Repu had a Republican pollster and a Democratic pollster. And I'll share with you some of the information they gave. Pretty <laughs> interesting. When you start listening to, to them, it gets kind of, gets a little crazy as we, we obviously see on, on the reports on TV. But uh, it was a very good conference. Uh, I also made some great connections with uh, uh, board members and uh, execs and, and commissioners from uh, Tennessee, um, uh, Arkansas, uh, Louisiana. Um, that, that was uh, uh, Oklahoma. Good conversations with them. Uh, we were all basically in the same um, uh, issues and topics. You know, just addressing it from different ways. And they were very, a lot of them knew already about our vision and, and methodology and processes that we used and were venturing. You know, so very good. <clears throat> um, I went to the KSB um, uh, conference over the weekend, uh, only on Saturday. I didn't come back from Washington until Friday night. And uh, it was very good. Uh, uh, major presentations were wonderful and, and did a good job. Dale was the one at the end of the day. He was the last one. Um, great sessions. Uh, again, one of the best things about going to these conferences, just reconnecting with so many people. Um, board members, meeting new board members, 
uh, or for me, they were new board members, as well as uh, reconnecting with so many of the administrators and uh, and folks in, in, in across the state. It was it was and, and legislators. Great conference. I really enjoyed being there. Well done. Um, I had a legislative forum that uh, the uh, uh, Clearwater Group and I, uh, the Service Center and I hosted, and uh, we had over 70 some people that were participating. I believe there were only five, and then six uh, uh, legislators that showed up. But uh, everyone had a an excellent day. It was a, a good learning session. Um, went went very well. Kathy and I were in Hayesville for a tour of the Hayesville uh, schools, and. I have to say that um, I keep bringing up when we talk about um, schools and, and, and lights, you know, we talk about uh, industry level certification is that uh, so many schools today and Hayesville certainly has done an excellent job with this of having the IB or International Baccalaureate program, having the AVID program, having the project program, you know, these are all um, uh, very, very uh, exciting opportunities for students to have choice within inside their schools of choice. And uh, that these programs are designed, AVID, uh, to reach out to a particular uh, segment of, of the school population while IB is at another, you know, and Project Lead the Way is another, and, you know, and, and the other programs that they had. So, um, and these are all certificate bearing <laughs> programs. You complete it, you have any of those programs, you have done. Uh, yeoman's work. You're ready for the next level. So I, I think we need to pay more attention to these kinds of programs that are, are in our schools uh, right now. And it would be, uh, I, I think, I, I'm going to try to keep finding out how many are doing them and what they're doing. And they're at no small cost. Every one of them costs. But every one of them provides a, a, a unique opportunity uh, for students to be ready for the next level. You know, career path is another one when we talk about the career pathways that the schools have. That, that these are all pathways to success when you're in these programs. I wouldn't mind having differentiated diplomas, you know, when we get down to it, something to talk about in the future, you know. <coughs> and then um, um, lastly for me, I would tell you that uh, I invited um, – Brittany Crabtree, who's the Kansas, Kansas Volunteer Commission uh, Executive Officer, uh, to Wichita for Turkey Day. And Turkey Day is a huge day they have in Wichita that was, I, I won't go into the whole origin of it, but it's, it's a, um, a raise, uh, collect turkeys, money, uh, groceries, you know, uh, uh, for the community. And I, I, I wanted to bring you the numbers of how much uh, they actually collected, but rest assured that it was a huge amount of turkeys. I, you know, you'll never see that many turkeys. Well, maybe it's amazing how many they bring in. It, and it's not just is it about uh, collecting turkeys, but at each school, they, um, um, uh, they, they, they plan this starting in August. Sometimes they're planning it right now. Yeah, there's a big competition, a lot of, and, and it's uh, at high schools, it used to be just high schools, now it's L middle schools, and now even elementary schools are involved. And uh, now feeder patterns are involved. When I say feeder patterns, like Northwest High School has, uh, the, the, the feeder pattern would be Wilbur and a uh, middle school, and then there's like seven or eight uh, middle, uh, elementary schools that feed into there, and each school has a feeder pattern. And now they're, they're, they're showing up. Well, they bring their bands, their cheerleaders, their JRTC, their marching band, their, their drums, their cheerleaders. And uh, uh, I, wanted, I wanted her to see this because there are three things that I see embedded. Obviously, service, and, and, and as we talked in civic responsibility, uh, giving back. Uh, it, and, and it's not just about, well, let's see how many we can get. It's, it's a whole school becoming engaged. No one can go without being engaged in this. You know, how they do it, filter it down through all the organizations within the school and all the classes, and they have internal competitions within their school. Okay? But, you know, there's a, a, a leadership group. They have a leadership group in Wichita that is, is chosen from each of the high schools. And they're the ones that run this. And they take on, kids take on these leadership roles and get all excited. Yeah, and the best way to get kids excited is a little competition. You know, and uh, uh, these kids work very hard. And, 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 and when I say work, they do the work. This is not an adult-driven. There is an adult uh, person who uh, leads it. 
uh, Patty Stauffer, and, and, and uh, she does a great job, but she couldn't do this without them. You know, well, tying it into our civic issue, it, it, it fits hand in glove. But I'd like us to think and think about in the future, Randy, as a, an agenda item, the fact that I would like us to look at the civic component and, and, and the turkey drive component as, can we give credit for a turkey drive? Can we give service learning? Can we give leadership learning? You know, can we look at credits, and we've all talked about this, in a different way? How to think about this civics and citizenship where you give it then the value, and I hate to say this, it's because it goes back to the Carnegie unit, but you know, um, these, the students that lead this come away with an, a, a, an experience and a, and a, and, and a, uh, that we want, but could we think about credit for this? I'd like to think about how we, th I'd like to talk about at this table, how we think about credit and the awarding of those credits. And I will tell you, I'm going one step further. I'm having a meeting later this week with Friends University on leadership credit. You know, college credit. It's high school credit, but college credit. You know, and, and the reason I'm talking to Friends is I, I have a relationship with them. Uh, we were, what could we do? How could we work together? And uh, so I'm jumping ahead of us even in high school, but thinking about it as a leadership credit. You know, um, there's, a, there's a great there. You know, for us to rethink how we think about, you know, the civic in our new definition that's going to be coming out one way or the other and how to move forward. So enough on that. that, that but what a great turkey drive. Congratulations to USD 259 and Patty and all the kids that put it together. And uh, you are got to be down there at 7 o'clock in the morning when it's free turkeys come in. You know, I don't know if the turkeys are happy, but, you know, it's, it's early. That, well, I didn't get there until 7. <laughs> you know. And by the way, you got to see how they deliver these things. Oh my God! You know, it's 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 it, they get style points, by the way, for how they deliver their their turkeys. No, this is not WP. <laughs> they put they take the frozen turkeys and put them in big boxes, and they have big um, uh, tractor trailer trucks to take them away. They have forklifts to put them in. Yeah, well, they have refrigerated. Well, that's why they do it then. It was it was 28 degrees when we started. You know, they they don't thaw very fast. You know, you know, but you can hear them coming. Some of them come from blocks away. You know, it's it's a real thrill. So it's not just the turkeys. It, it's it's about the leadership and the civic responsibility, and uh, it's about credit. It's about our new definition. It's about looking at things that we do already. And, uh, and, and building on those things. So, uh, the next item we have is um, um, board travel. Any additions, subtractions? Uh, Carolyn? Can I have an addition tomorrow. I'll be going to Kansas City, uh, and I'm sure it's in connection with the Kansas Volunteer Commission that I received an invitation to attend a meeting for the Vernon Multi-Purpose Center, the future of that. So I would, I'm, I'm getting the approval for it, but since I have a day's credit, <coughs> I don't really want the money, but it's my addition. Oh, yes, thank you. Okay. Any other additions? Um, Dina Horst? I have, uh, I have an addition. Tomorrow, I'll be going to Kansas City, uh, and I'm sure it's in connection with the Kansas Volunteer Commission that I received an invitation to attend a meeting for the Vernon Multi-Purpose Center, the future of that. So I would, I'm, I'm getting the approval for it, but since <laughs> I have a day's credit, <coughs> I don't really want the money, but it's my addition. Oh, yes, thank you. Okay. Any other additions? Um, Dina Horst? I have uh, had an invitation from uh, Prairie Hills uh, to come and visit on the 16th. And um, so I'd like to, and that's 16th of December, I'd like to add that and if I can work it out 
I'm also hoping to go to Centralia, which is a different district um, when Randy is presenting there. So if it works out, but because my first, my first uh, commitment is needs to be to, to Prairie Hills. But anyway, okay. thank you. Jim Porter. I was supposed to meet with the legislative coordinating committee or call tomorrow, which wasn't going to be in a, which wasn't going to be an additional cost or anything. I just got a text, Ken, uh, that uh, that may be canceled. So I need to. It'll be a mileage only at some undetermined date. If it's not tomorrow. Any others? I would entertain a motion to approve travel requests as presented and uh, added uh, just now. Uh, Sally Cobble moves. Seconded by Carolyn Campbell. All those in favor of the travel request as presented, please raise your hand. Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes 10-0. Well, thank you very much. Um, <coughs> that concludes our uh, state board meeting. Um, and I, we're now adjourned. See you in uh, January. Have a great Christmas and safe holiday. Merry Christmas, happy holidays, and safe travels.